Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy sealed products and singles directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a red-green Singularity deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring the 10-mana Mythic Rare Sorcery from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, saying as an additional cost to cast it, we may tap any number of untapped creatures we control to make it cost one generic mana less to cast for each creature tapped this way, so it basically has Convoke, and then Explosive Singularity deals 10 damage to any target. So an incredibly powerful burn spell that's capable of ending the game, but of course comes with a few challenges in casting it, and what better way to try and cast Singularity than making a whole lot of creature tokens, and that's where Phylath World Sculptor comes in handy, the 6 mana 5-5 five five legendary elemental, when it enters a battlefield is joined by number 01 green plant creature tokens for each basic land we control, and our deck is playing a lot more basic lands than usual, with 10 of each to make lots of plants, and then with a landfall we get to put 4 plus 1 plus 1 counters on target plant we control, so we can also turn them into win conditions. So even if the opponent manages to answer Phyleth right away, we may have been able to grow one of our plants and leave behind a lot of tokens to help us cast Singularity to end the game. Then looking at the rest of our deck, we've got some of the usual suspects in red and green, with a Seekas Chariot and Goldspan Dragon, but they're actually both quite synergistic with Singularity, as Chariot makes a pair of 2-2 green cat creature tokens when it enters, and we can copy our tokens when the Chariot attacks, and then Goldspan Dragon making treasure tokens when it attacks or becomes the target of a spell, and we can sacrifice those treasures for twice the amount of mana to help us ramp into the 10 mana sorcery. Then going through the rest of the deck, we've got a new addition with Fable of the Mirror Breaker from Kamigawa, a saga that on Chapter 1 makes a 2-2 Goblin Shaman creature token that when it attacks makes a treasure token, which is also very synergistic with both Chariot and Goldspan Dragon, as we can potentially copy either the Goblin token or treasure tokens with our Chariot, and then Goldspan Dragon helps us sacrifice those treasures for twice the amount of mana, then on chapter 2 we can discard up to 2 cards, and if we do draw that many cards, so we can maybe loot away lands or early ramp cards to help dig for our finishers, and then finally it transforms into Reflection of Kiki Jiki, which is a 2-2 creature, can pay a man and tap it, to create a token that's a copy of another target non-legendary creature we control, it has haste, and we have to sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step, so also plays very nicely with cards like Goldspan Dragon. Then the early part of our deck has four copies of Sentinel, which plays very nicely with Magda, which is a 2-1 that makes a treasure token when it becomes tapped, so whether it's attacking, or becomes tapped by the Sentinel to make mana, or maybe helps crew the chariot so it can make a treasure token without putting itself in harm's way. Then we also have two copies of Emergent Sequence as a ramp card finding a basic land, so helps out with Phylath. And then Prosperous Innkeeper, a 1-1 one -one that makes a treasure when it enters, and will gain life as more creatures enter the battlefield, which also plays well with all the tokens we're generating. And then at 4 mana we're playing the Partners, a 2-3 Legendary Human Ranger with first strike and reach, saying at the beginning of combat on our turn, put X plus 1 plus 1 counters on another target creature we control, where X is their power, and that creature also gains haste until end of turn. So just an incredibly powerful card in any red-green deck, also especially synergistic with cards like Isika's Chariot, and the 2-2 token we get from Fable of the Mirror Breaker can even give a reflection of Kikijiki haste, so we can copy a creature right away, so just a ton of cool, interesting synergies. And then a mana base, as we mentioned, 10 of each basic land, which is a lot more than you expect to see in a standard mana base, so it does give us a bit of a challenge when casting our early creatures, which is why we also have four copies of the red-green pathway to potentially smooth out the early game so we don't get stuck with all basics of the same color. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with an acceptable hand. Ideally we find Sentinel or Chariot to go with Magda. If not, she can still maybe make a treasure token along the way. And then Phylath into Singularity is where it's at. There's our Chariot, perfect. So I can go Innkeeper into Chariots and then play Magda afterwards. Especially if her opponent presents a blocker for Magda, which the Reckon Raids would do. Anniversary 2 3 Death Touch, also a good blocker. Alright, double singularity is a little bit overkill here. But uh, I guess double singularity is 20 damage, so it's almost enough for the win here. 
opponent a blue-black, kind of mid-rangey deck. Could see ninjutsu. Alright, let's go for chariot and hope it doesn't get countered. Gain some life. And then next turn Magda can crew Chariot to make a treasure. Chariot could even copy the treasure if we want more mana. Although it's probably not going to get to attack more than once. Opponent did not play anything. Possible they're holding on to a removal spell. They want to point at the Chariot. Right, opponent keeps adversary on defense, which is fine. That kind of plays into our late game plan anyway. So I can play Magda. I could crew chariots right now, but then our opponent can likely use their instant speed removal. So I think I'm going to try and waste their mana and just pass crewing the chariots in their turn just to make a treasure. Since attacking here would not be all that profitable anyway. And then next turn with the treasure we can play Goldspan or potentially Phylath. Ooh, Invoke Despair. Not bad here, but uh, still manageable, so we'll probably sacrifice Innkeeper. And we lose four more life. So now we can crew chariot without any concern. Make a treasure. Another Magda. So can play Goldspan Dragon. Probably fine to crew chariot now and trade it for adversary if that means I get to copy a treasure token with a Goldspan in play. Or I can keep Chariot as kind of a treasure factory with Magna, which is also totally reasonable. Still probably fine to crew Chariot now just to make the treasure. And then we'll not attack. And then we're happy to keep gold span around to double our treasure mana, but it's probably gonna get taken out here. Meathook Massacre for four will clean up nicely. So that sets us back on the Singularity game plan, but we can still cast Phyleth to help out. Times two even. Crew Chariots can copy a plant. And hope there's no backup massacre incoming, as we're now stuck on just four lands. Opponents got an Infernal Grasp for Phylath, the card they were probably holding at the start of the game. So our opponent's at 17, so if we find red mana for back-to-back -back Singularity, we can get there. And there we go. So, yeah, we cannot even crew the chariot right now, so we'll just cast Singularity, tapping all five tokens, point it upstairs, and hope we can do it again next turn. The Decay tokens attack. That's going to deal six total, thanks to the Massacre. So, still not sure what they're playing blue for. Could be counter spells, could be maybe some zombie synergy. Aha, uh -huh, Kaito, that makes sense. So that gets to draw a card. But if they don't kill my plants, I can just play another Singularity. And the prospect of killing a plant token probably doesn't feel great for them. Soren, it's not gonna help. Makes a vampire. 
And yeah, Singularity could even play a Sentinel first, just because. Bam. And our opponent very literally explodes onto the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a promising hand featuring Sentinel plus Magda. Now we're a bit light on basic lands for Phylath, but hopefully we'll draw some along the way. Turn 1 champion, so some sort of zombie deck. So the plan still turn to Magda, I think. Could also go Innkeeper plus potentially play Magda. Which would gain a life. Scab grows champion, giving it two extra power, so off to a nice start. Another singularity is not really what we needed here. Yeah, if I go Magda and use Sentinel, I have to use a treasure to play Innkeeper. So I'm better off going Innkeeper into Magda, but the question is if I even want to given that I don't have a play lined up for next turn. Might be better off just playing Magda and passing. And then save up our treasures so we can play Phylath in a timely fashion. Another champion. Opponent does attack. Could double block Scab. Which may honestly be worth it. We lose Magda. Still get to make a treasure on the way out. But it significantly decreases the amount of pressure that the opponent's uh, applying here. Another Sentinel, so Innkeeper into Sentinel is the play. And then next turn we can play Phylath. Ideally pick up some more basic lands, because right now there's only one. Double block champion. Okay, so now I have to decide if I want to play the lands after playing Phyleth or before. I think I want the extra plants, so I'm gonna play before. Also saves me a treasure. Because with double singularity, we really just want as many tokens as possible. Also gain a bit more life with the Innkeeper. Opponent still stuck on two lanes, but double Shambling Gas to make treasure potentially. Opponent passes, a gold span, an excellent draw. So that can start flying over, making more mana. And now we're certainly capable of casting a Singularity. And we just need six more damage. Headless Rider means we're gonna see more aggressive attacks. For now I could jump the champion. Can probably wait a turn to do so. Unless they give all their zombies flying next turn with... Uh, the three drop. I guess that's an argument to still block here. Okay, that can grow one of my plants. And then gold span attacks. Does anything else want to attack? How much mana would I have? Second main if gold span attacks six. Yeah, that would be enough to cast singularity, so. Might be worth it to attack with everyone, and then we're likely gonna get in 6 damage, so Singularity can finish them off. Mm, 
Double jump, take six. Innkeeper down, Putin makes a treasure. And a couple zombies. So they've got a very large champion. They would have lethal next turn if it weren't for this handy mythic rare. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. We've got the Sentinel plus Magda start, so I'm keeping and then partners into Goldspan Dragons. Not a bad follow-up. Turn 1 Ghast could potentially take out Magda. Probably not blocking with my Sentinel either. So opponent Mono Black. And they might have a Deadly Dispute. Alright, they're gonna get in for one first. Right, just another Shambling Ghast instead. And I Twitch. Don't have another 2 drops, so I'm just gonna play Magda and pass. So Sentinel can potentially still block an eye twitch. But they could easily have some interaction here to take out my creatures. Alright, Power Word kill. I think it's still worth to make a treasure here, even if we lose our blocker in the process. And then probably reasonable to wait on partners and just go for Fable into maybe a Goldspan Dragon. Still prioritize playing my basic lands out. Yeah, playing partners would not be bad. We can grow Sentinel, get a nice attack in. Opponent's black green, so they could have a binding to destroy our partners as well. So I'd rather have them destroy my fable. And then probably fine to stay on defense. And then on the second chapter, I'm happy to discard Pathway. Probably keep everything else. This attack puts Sentinel on Eye Twitch. They could just have a Meat Hook Massacre for one incoming to wipe the board. But so be it. Opponent gets Containment Breach, which can destroy Fable. But if that's their entire turn, I'm not too upset. Ooh, Chariot's a good draw too. I think we still get Goldspan in play first, just because of all the treasure synergy it has. So... I could even go Goldspan into a Seekers Chariot. That seems powerful. So yeah, play Goldspan and then just attack with a team. Could also not play Chariot since we can give it haste next turn with the partners anyway, just in case of a sweeper. Although right now Meat Hook Massacre would only be for two, potentially three. Would still be effective at clearing most of my tokens. So I think we'll pass. Potentially worse in the face of a spot removal spell on Dragon, like maybe a Binding. But another Power Word kill is not going to work on our Dragon at least. Trespasser can drain us for a bit here, exiling Magda. Shambling Ghasts attacks, at least one of them. And another Fable. Second so play Partners and Chariot, giving the Chariot Hastes. And then I probably want to crew using the Shaman, which is not attacking into the Trespasser. But I can copy the Shaman with the Chariot at least. And then we still have enough mana to play Fable. Potentially holding the pathway so I can discard it on Chapter 2. Or we can be a bit more conservative. 
and hold some creatures in hand in case of a board wipe, which might be more prudent. Well, the opponent really needs to wipe the board for at least three, which would also kill Trespasser, would still leave us with a Goldspan. So they would probably just wipe the entire board, including Goldspan. Yeah, keeping the Fable's probably safer. And I'll hang on to the land as well. And then we'll still have a Chariot. That's a little easier to crew if we have at least a 2-2 token to work with. And if we draw Singularity, we should be able to end the game on the spot. Shambling Gas attacks. Can block it with the Partners, which has First Strike. Although that would give them one extra treasure, does that matter? Difference between Massacre for 4 and 5 is non-existent, so... What else could they have? For 7 mana, I can't think of much. I guess they could have given the partners minus one and then cast Massacre for two to finish them off. But then we still would have kept our Goldspan Dragon, so I think we would have been okay. And it's going to be a Massacre for four anyway. All right. That works. So our opponent gains a ton of life now. But glad we held on to Fable. And then we can discard two lands now. Still have a large chariot, so most creatures we draw can crew it. Opponent gets in there with their creature land. We are down to 11, so it's not going to take many attacks. Another chariot's not bad. Discard those lands. Okay, so I can play Chariot to keep the original one so it can attack right away. And play a Sentinel alongside it, I suppose. Get in for 8, make another treasure. And copy the Shaman. Alright, so we are presenting Lethal for next turn. Invoke Despair. Okay, forces me to sack a Sentinel. Take two damage after sacrificing our enchantment as well. But we still have enough to cross the finish line here. Alright, sweet, managed to survive a massacre, and Fable put in some good work as well. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. This hand leaves a little bit to be desired. Sentinel, no 2-drop to make extra mana with. And, uh, well, we can use Fable to dig towards our curve toppers. The early game is just going to be a little weak. So let's mulligan. This seems better. Probably have to get rid of Singularity, since we're not necessarily going to cast it anytime soon. Although I would like to draw another one at some point, if Goldspan gets to make a few treasures. Opponent, turn one Swamp. Red, Black and Kalein going to make a treasure. So it's the treasure mirror match. Well, I could attack and then play partner second main, but that kind of defeats the purpose. So we'll just play Fable and Pass, I think. And then partners can maybe grow Magda to attack past Kalein. Interesting attack. They might just have another Kalein they want to play. Who knows? Alright, that makes sense.
And what do we discard? I guess one partner can go. That's why there's two of them. Make two treasure. Good playing keeper. Although, might be overextending into a massacre at that point. We'll just pass. Blood on the snow instead, which is why they have all those snow lanes. Still have some treasure left over to combine with our goldspan dragon. So goldspan first and then innkeeper. Otherwise the mana doesn't quite work out. And we could double innkeeper. Although... If they have another sweeper... Holding innkeeper could also be good if we draw another fable at some point to discard them. I guess we'll split the difference and play one. But it's not like it attacks past Kalein. Opponent's got their own gold span, makes sense. So they'll have four mana left over. Next turn, Reflection could copy my gold span, so we can attack for eight and make two treasure. Deadly disputes. We'll draw two. Opponent passes. Magda the draw. Okay, so do we want to play around another Blood on the Snow? It's going to be pretty difficult to beat, unless we draw like an Explosive Singularity at some point. Which I guess is a realistic out, as our opponent would get back their gold span after wiping the board. Now I can hit for 9. And then having these left over to discount Singularity could be important. I don't think they really add much, even though we could gain a bit more life. So let's do this. I guess one concern could be what if they just kill Goldspan? Do we still have enough to cross the finish line? And yeah, maybe we don't. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, maybe I'll split the difference again and play one Magda out. Bones at five. And we've got five in play, even if they kill Goldspan. Another Kalein. And a Shambling Gas, so the ground is stalled up. Deadly Dispute can kill Magda, perhaps. But we still have Gold Span plus Reflection. Alright, double gold span, it's only fair. And now an 8-8, thanks to Kalein giving it extra counters. Well, now it's not looking so great anymore, but we do still have a neat trick available, which is using reflection in the opponent's turn to copy gold span and then copy it again in our turn to maybe attack with three of them. And if we ever draw singularity, that also ends the game. Hmm, opponent's attacking with everyone. That's not a good sign. Probably means there's a sweeper incoming. So I guess I can copy Gold's pen now with Reflection. And then just trade for the other one. Save myself a bit of damage. And then the original Gold Span blocks Kalein. Sure. Otherwise, we would use Reflection in our end step to be able to attack with it in our turn, because it goes away at the beginning of the end step.
If I knew for a fact they had a board wipe, then of course we could have chumped the 8-8s, eight eight, but still don't know that for a fact. Alright, blood on the snow did seem obvious. So they get back their gold span and another shambling ghasts. Well, we're just drawing towards our explosive singularity, it's simple as that. We've got 10 mana to cast it, so... Not too many turns until we're dead. Didn't think we've seen any copies so far, so... We've got about a 1 in 11 chance. Another gold span over the top. So, only got one draw step here. And the lands. Alright, GG's. Close game. But double blood on the snow was a bit too much for us. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable start. Ideally, we find a 2-drop so we can... Uh, actually ramp into our chariot with our sentinel. Turn one Delver of Secrets, okay. Probably fine to trade one damage for one damage. If it transforms we won't be able to block, so might as well get our damage in while we can. Lots of blue mana means lots of counter spells. Could play around Jory Disruption by playing a turn behind. Think we just forced the issue here. And attack for one. They probably have a bounce spell to bounce the shaman. Fading Hope lets them scry to the bottom, so they can try and set up Delver. Finding saw it coming. So they've got a counter spell available. Luckily we have two chariots. What do I discard is a question. Phylath might be ambitious in the face of counter spells. It's also not even that good if we resolve it without putting counters on a plant token, since the plants don't really block Delver. So I think we can discard it alongside a land. And then try and force our chariot through. Magda might actually be a card they counter, because it's very good with Sentinel. Yep. And then we can play another Sentinel, maybe set up a double block. Or at least see if they attack, which implies they have another bounce spell. Alright, so I double block, they bounce. Then they would be down to two mana, so they might be unable to counter chariots, unless it's a Jory Disruption, which they didn't have on turn two. So I think forcing that play is fine. So there's a Fading Hope. And our opponent foretells. So now we can resolve Chariots. Iteration goes digging. And yeah, if we can cast Singularity, we only need to get 8 damage in. Although resolving a 10 mana sorcery against a blue deck is not that easy. Could have made it uncounterable without really changing its power level too much. Another Fading Hope, so plenty of those around. Okay, so I'm guessing we go for Fable plus Sentinel to help crew the chariots. 
start with Fable in case of disruption. Although they might have foretold a counter spell. Yep. Yeah, I don't think they would have countered Sentinel here, so I think I still like that sequencing. And then now Chariot can attack without fearing any interaction. Otherwise we would have wanted to copy the uh, Shaman instead of a Cat. Ooh, Goldspan. A little unexpected, not the best pairing with Delver of Secrets necessarily, but certainly gonna hurt here. So we can take seven. How close are we to casting Singularity? Four lands. We're getting close to enough tokens. Still need to get some damage in too. If I take seven, then next turn I would have to chump. So does the Sentinel really make a difference? I don't think it does, so I'd rather chump now in case they pick up another removal spell for it and they just kill us on the spot instead. Alright, so we'll crew chariots using the tokens from a second one. Should have played my land first again in case of a jewelry disruption. Alright. And then next turn, I think we'll have enough tokens to cast Singularity, plus I guess points at four, so attacking also works. So hopefully they hit the brakes to play defense, and then we can burn them out. The Hollowed Storm Giants we can chump with a cat, so that's taken into account. And then our opponent explodes. Alright, double singularity, sadly, unable to be cast in time. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Our hand is very close to being great if we can find red mana, but we only have one draw step to get there. It's a very big gamble, and if we miss, it's pretty bad. Although if we draw Innkeeper or Emergence Sequence, those are still good draws. So we've got 14 plus 6, 20 good draws. Yeah, that's probably good enough odds. Well, that's definitely not a draw we were hoping for. Red mana, could it still be in time? Can play Magda and play Fable. So we're catching back up. Facing a green white enchantment deck. Wedding announcements. Gonna make a token. And the emergence sequence a draw, so what do we get rid of? Might just be sequence plus land, so we're likely drawing more lands anyway. And I can play chariot no matter what. Sure. Alright, no land to draw, but some good spells. So, yeah, time for chariot, I think. Still making plenty of treasures as well. And then probably fine to trade for Weaver, which the opponent's unlikely to uh, want to trade off here. So we're not too far from casting Singularity with five creatures and, yeah, five mana. We could already cast it next turn but probably want to get some more damage in first. Companion draws a card. They could copy the trigger with Weaver as well. And that's what they'll do. That's okay. 
So they'll make another token end of turn for one white mana. Unlikely that they play anything else. So pretty realistic that we get seven damage in. I can crew chariots maybe by playing another chariot first. Just to get in more damage, I'm fine trading off Magda now. Yeah, that seems okay. So crew that. And attack with the team. Does the Sentinel want to attack? I guess Sentinel might want to stay back. Although if they block Sentinel with Companion, they're not trading for a Goblin Shaman, for instance. Ooh, a March of Otherworldly Light. That's unexpected. Okay, that changes this uh, turn a little bit. We lost both our Chariots, but we can still attack with our 2-2 tokens. Does Magda want to trade for a 1-1? One, one? Yeah, that might be fine. Bones at 13. And then can play another Fable. And then next turn Magda plus Sentinel can make treasure right away. Just need to get three more damage in. So yeah, the March pitched Emirios call and another wedding announcement. The uh, double-faced lands are quite good with uh, the new March cycle. So opponent's gonna double the announcement trigger, making two tokens. And now their team has plus one, plus one. Sentinel can go hang on to the rests. Okay, so Reflection can copy the Shaman token. So it can play Magda, use a floating mana from Sentinel to activate Reflection, which can copy the Shaman token and probably attack with all. As long as we connect for four, Singularity will take care of the rest. And now their opponent has a Haunting, they can quickly generate a board, so glad we could get some damage in right now. And I don't think we'll struggle to get enough mana here. Got four lands, four treasures, five creatures, about to be six. So yeah, this is one of the games where opponent might be able to take over on the board, yeah, especially with a large lifelinker. So this might have slipped away under normal circumstances, but these aren't normal circumstances now, are they? Activate Sentinel with Magda. Tap all our creatures and Singularity to end the game. Awesome! So after a bit of a sketchy start, we still managed to get there, thanks to Sentinel plus Magda catching us back up, and then Singularity an awesome way to close out the game, and the video as well here. So yeah, as you may have noticed, we did not play this deck in Ranked today. I tried it out and was quickly reminded why that was a bad idea. So I wouldn't recommend it as a competitive choice, but if you already had some of the cards, maybe happen to open a couple singularities from the recent set, then why not give it a try? So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.